Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption in Leilani Estates update for our first August update of August 2nd, 2018. So before we get started, I want to remind everybody, uh, if you're currently not subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so and also hit that bell icon so you get notified uh, when I post a new video. If you, of course, like this video and you want to show your appreciation, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me a lot. Um, also, if you've got something to say, uh, let's hear it in the comments. Uh, I appreciate your comments. I love reading them. And uh, I, I try to answer a few here and there, but uh, sometimes it's really difficult. That's a lot of comments in some cases, but uh, anyways, moving on, I want to get right up to the update um, simply because there is something that I am actually very excited to, to show y'all. No, the eruption isn't over, but it does have to do with a prediction I made in the last uh, eruption update uh, video, and uh, we have some evidence uh, photographic evidence that I'd like to show y'all in reference to that prediction. So let's get on to the update and we'll, we'll cover that in the uh, look at that there segment. And now for the report. The USGS reports for Thursday, August 2nd, 2018 at 12.23 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time that Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the channel leading northeastward from the vent. No overflows were reported overnight and lava levels in the more distant portions of the channel system were low during this morning's overflight. At the coast, the south edge of the lava flow did not advance westward in the past day and remains less than 175 meters or 0.1 miles from the Pohoiki boat ramp in Isaac Holly Park. Lava is actively entering the ocean along a broad 2 kilometer or 1.2 two-mile flow front centered near the former Ahalanui Beach Park, and no other fissures are currently active as of this morning. A recent brush fire that started near the PGV access road at the south edge of the Fissure 8 channel burned much of the vegetation around the road as well as the west side of Pu'u Honua Ula, I think I got that one right, um, the fire significantly damaged the tele or telemetry hub that relayed data from several geophysical monitoring instruments in the area as well as the PG cam. Work, work is underway to restore telemetry for the instruments and a combined seismometer and GPS station nearby was reinstalled early this morning. Over on Highway 130, and the HBO field crews are still tracking activity as the conditions allow and are reporting that information to the Hawaii County Civil Defense. Observations are also collected on a daily basis from the cracks in the area. No significant changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions have been noted. Up on Gilaway Volcano Summit, the most recent collapse event occurred at 11.55 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, August 2nd, and was similar in character and magnitude to previous events. A preliminary magnitude 5.4 earthquake for the event was reported by the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, and inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halima'uma'u continues. Sulfur dioxide emissions from the volcano summit are very low. The gas and minor amounts of ash resuspended by wind are being transported downwind. Small bursts of ash and gas may coincide with the summit collapse events. The summit region is occasionally impacted by sulfur dioxide from the lower east rift zone eruption. And finally, the EPA air monitoring sensor report. The sensor located at the Pahoa Community Center at 9.42 p.m. was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million for SO2 and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Over in Nanavale at 9.42 p.m., the SO2 sensor was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million. In Leilani Estates at 9.42 p.m., the SO2 sensor was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million and the H2S was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million as well. And what would be normally our last sensor reading uh, for the EPA report uh, down in um, 
excuse me, down in Kalapana Seaview Estates. Uh, that sensor is currently offline. However, the last reading that it showed was for August 1st at 12.57 p.m. and it was reading 0, 0.0 parts per million for SO2 and 0, 0.0 parts per million for H2S. Now, due to that sensor being offline, we're going to actually move further down to another sensor we don't normally look at, which is the Kalapana Painted Church Sensor. Currently at 9.42 p.m., it was reading 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And that will basically conclude our EPA sensor report, except for I want to add uh, just a, a few more sensor readings, which are actually located up on the Kilauea summit. Looking at a sensor that's located in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park at 9.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, the SO2 reading was 0 0.2351 parts per million. Uh, another sensor located in the same area identified uh, also as Hawaii Volcanoes National Park uh, currently says it's detecting a reading, but it does not show any data. And the third sensor in that area, uh, which is also located in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, for at 9.30 p.m. was showing a sensor reading for sulfur dioxide of 0 0.2145 parts per million. So there's apparently some sulfur dioxide uh, up in volcano area tonight. And that will actually conclude the EPA sensor report. That'll also do it for the general USGS report for this update this evening. Now we're going to move on to our favorite little segment. Look at that there. I actually have uh, a, quite a few little photos that uh, I want to show you that were posted yesterday and today by uh, uh, Civil Defense and uh, USGS. Uh, the first one we're looking at here, obviously, is uh, Fissure 8. Uh, looking down inside the cone actually which is a kind of a, a very interesting perspective that we don't get to, to see very often um, but what I want you to look at uh, excuse me what I want you to look at that there at is the actual um, activity inside the cone if you look to the left center of the picture where the, the lava is actually exiting the cone you see a little fountain right there um, now granted that the height of this fountain does vary and in this photograph it's being shown very low however this has been something I've been noticing over time uh, like the last week or two I guess it's been uh, the, the fountains aren't as high as they used to be uh, they're more bubbling um, what the significance of that is I don't know for say other than I would interpret it as uh, a lower pressure behind the actual erupting uh, lava um, but again that's just my amateur opinion uh, the other thing I want you to look at or even notice which I don't know if y'all have been noticing but uh, there's not the three or four little fountains located in this cone anymore they seem to uh, have either consolidated into one or possibly two looking at this photo uh, or the you know they have shut down because if you look to the bottom right uh, of the photo you, you see the splash up on the side of that cone there I don't know if that's actually from a fountain or if that was possibly captured as some debris on the inside fell off and caused a, a little explosion you know like we see up at the summit well like what we did see up at the summit uh, when there would be a rock fall down into the lava lake it would usually cause a big splash explosion uh, which was actually pretty cool to witness the next look at that there is this photograph and if you look at that there on the right hand side of the photo uh, lining the rim of the crater this is Halima'uma'u crater by the way uh, you see all this white uh, in the picture that is ash uh, the ash that's being deposited from the collapse events and and from you know any resuspended ash or, or debris that gets into the air during rock balls and things of that nature uh, some of it is very short traveled and is landing of course of course where you see it in the photo and stuff that gets higher up into the air uh, gets transported downwind and, and deposited there uh, usually down in uh, uh, Kau and South Point area 
And the next photo we're going to look at is the, of course, the Kilauea Summit again. Um, however, what we're looking at here, uh, and look at that there, that there is what the Halima'u Ma'u Crater looked like before. And if you look down towards the bottom right of the center of the photo, you see a building and a parking lot and road. That is the Jaggered Museum. That is where the overlook was that uh, all of our tourists love to come to and go look at uh, the lava lake. And the lava lake, of course, is the, the, I believe in this photograph, it's the smoldering hole. Now, this was taken way back before all this occurred. The reason why I'm showing this is because one of the commenters asked if there was any before or afters of this uh, particular location. And USGS finally put out... Uh, another attempt to give us that. So this is the before and this is the after. It really doesn't look like the same place anymore. Um, but if you do look to the right of the photo, um, just below the center line, you'll see again the Jagged Museum and of course the parking lot in comparison to uh, the other uh, before picture. Um, so now let me zoom out because the way they put this together is side by side. So I'm going to zoom out so you can see both pictures next to each other now. So I'll give you a, a few seconds to take a good look before we move on to our next photograph, which is actually very interesting. Okay, moving on. What I want you to look at that there is right there in the center of the screen. Those are what we call lava trees. These are brand new lava trees created by the 2018 Kilauea eruption uh, flows from Fissure 8. Uh, basically a lava tree is formed when, when lava floods into an area and, and basically covers the trees, uh, you know, burns them off halfway, uh, could be the full tree. It all depends on the depth of lava, I guess. But what happens is, is it basically it encases around the tree, and because of the the, the moisture in the tree, it uh, basically hardens the lava on the inside. You know, cools it a little bit faster, enough to make it kind of stick, and then you know slowly burns away the 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 uh, the inside of the tree. Well, it burns away the tree, leaving the, these little areas you know that have been crusted over a uh, hollow. And that hollow, actually, if you break it open, will have a perfect mold of the outside of the tree, which is why we call these lava trees. Okay, now moving to what I had referred to earlier about a prediction that I had made and photographic evidence in relation to that, that prediction. Uh, we'll go over what I predicted real quick, which is I showed this thermal imaging, which was taken on July 31st, and I zoomed in to this location here. And basically what I stated was I saw the difference in the lava temperature where the two lobes of this first braid uh, come together. Uh, if you look there at the center of the picture to the left on the top of the left lobe of the braid you, you can see that the lava is cresting over and cooling there uh, which is right there at the connection to the uh, left lobe of the second braid that had shut down uh, a few weeks ago. I'm not sure the exact date but it shut down due to uh, I think US, USGS said that it was a blockage that caused it to shut down um, which I guess if this what we're seeing here actually occurs that would be considered a blockage um, however I don't know when they say blockage if they meant you know debris had flowed down and clogged it up rocks broke off or whatever but anyways that's not the point the, the point is is I made the prediction that this particular lobe here uh, in question will probably you know if this process continues will probably shut down so if you look at that there in this photograph right there uh, where the in the 31st thermal map showed that there was some changes happening where the two lobes come together in this uh, August 2nd image from the USGS you will see that that for that lobe that we were looking at which is now on the right hand side from the perspective of this image is in fact shutting down so again this makes me ask the question what variable is actually decreasing in the equation that governs the flow dynamics of this particular uh, lava flow uh, we know volume pressure temperature speed all all play a factor in it because the lava is literally racing to the ocean 
uh, and in order for it to get there it has to stay hot it has to stay a high volume uh, and it, and it has to travel pretty quickly because if it travels too slowly it gets more time to cool as it, it gets there if it if it's not hot enough then it can't travel as far before it crusts over and if it's moving too slowly of course it gives it more time to cool so the whole idea is it's got to stay hot for long enough to get to the ocean and if any of those factors change then the flow doesn't get to the ocean at least from the way i understand it so what we're seeing here of course is these lobes shutting down that means there's a change it's either a change in the volume a change in the temperature a change in the speed you know that there's something changing okay well that pretty much does it for this look at that there i just wanted to show this because it's very interesting uh not exactly like i said sure what it means but uh we do know that things are changing uh, and that is as clear as I can make it. So that does it for tonight's update. Remember to check me out on Smug Mug and Red Bubble. Those links, of course, are in the description. Follow me on Twitter uh, where you can share your photographs with me or, or even ask me questions. I do check in there at least once or twice a day. So, um, boy, I've said so a few times, haven't I? So, one more time, uh, thank you for listening. I do appreciate it. And you have a great morning, afternoon, or evening. This has been the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for August 2nd, 2018.